everybody, welcome to one more round with Josh Norris. This is take two of our intro because I haven't done this 68 times. Anyway, I'm excited because we've got Nate Palmer here, low carb hustle on Instagram. Uh, he's an author, has his own energy drink just came out, obviously very into fitness if you're watching this on YouTube. But before we get into this, uh, I want you guys to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, because we have a ton of good stuff coming out, including what you're listening to today. If you hear some stuff that uh, is pertinent that you think other people should listen to, I want you to share it out. I appreciate it. You know, we do this for free, but that's how we grow the show. So, Nate, welcome, man. Dude, thank you for having me. This is fun. Absolutely. So, which camera do I look at? Uh, well, I normally look, don't look, look at any of them. One. Okay. But I do that in the intro. But yeah, we could both stare like this. And it would be the most awkward this conversation. This feels natural to me. Yeah, this is the most <laughs> awkward conversation. Yeah. So, no uh, eye contact. N none. None. No, we, I see that because I have no self esteem. Just you know, look, look at your shoes. Uh, but we met at Miniscon like a couple months ago. Yeah, I guess it was months, in January. Yeah. And it was super cool because like, I, I knew you were tied in with the Menace Boys. We had uh, Jason who uh, was on a little bit ago, and uh, he's freaking awesome. And then I met you, and I'm like, dude. I, we should have known each other like a brother from another mother. I mean, you gave me your book, which was dope. I was just, we were just talking about it before. Um, but tell me a little bit about how you got into like the fitness world and, and where, where'd your journey start? So I feel like a lot of people get into fitness because they're like on the football team or, you know, into sports. And that was never my story. In fact, I remember one time in high school, so like 14 or whatever, 15, and this girl came up to me. I won't say her name, but it rhymes with Shristine. Oh yeah, Shirley. <laughs> and she was like, "Hey, let me see your let me see your arms." Mm -hmm. I was like, "Are you talking about Big Dub Diesel? Are you talking about the boss?" <laughs> and she turns to her friend. and She goes, "See, I told you his arms were smaller than yours." <laughs> oh, I don't know if you've ever been a 15 year old male in high school, yeah. but like that's the worst thing you can hear. Yeah, from a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big, big time crush. Doesn't feel good from a guy either, but no. Yeah. But uh, so I was like, well, I gotta fix this, gotta fix this issue and, and uh, gain some value and self-esteem back. So I started working out and you know, typical high school routines, you know, did chest and buys on Monday, buys and tries on <laughs> Tuesday, arms and abs on Wednesday, and there would be the whole process, <laughs> yeah. just awful. And so worked out through high school, never really got results for some reason, yeah. super, super weird. Yeah. And then worked out in college a little bit and then eventually I was decided like, I like this stuff. I really enjoy reading about it, learning about it, and I also haven't gotten what I want out of this. Right. So I started, I was like, I guess I'll get a job in a gym. So I work as a personal trainer. So I've been working as a personal trainer, being like, I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. So I tried everything keto, paleo, fasting, mm -hmm. did Orange Theory, boot camps, bodybuilding, workouts, CrossFit, all this stuff. And nothing really seemed to work for me. So a couple of years, a couple of years back then, someone, a magazine had hit me up and was like, hey, We'd like to, you to write an article for us. And I was like, great. Do you want an article on building muscle or burning fat? Because those are the only two things that there are. And they're like, how about something actually about eating for all day energy? And I was like, that's not a thing. That is, that, no, that's nothing. <laughs> so I was like, cool, how much are you going to pay me? And they're like, we'll pay you an exposure. And I was like, perfect. I love exposure. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll pay you in compliments that uh, everything turned out good and, yeah. and exposure. Yeah. yeah. Put, we'll put your name on, our, on the article. How about that? So I go and I do some research on this. I reach out to a bunch of people who I respect in the industry. And I get some uh, kind of like interesting revelations in terms of what this would take. Because previously, I'm like all about the six meals per day, a lot of white rice, a lot of chicken, a lot of broccoli, really low fats, you know? Mm -hmm. Eating all the time. Stoke the metabolic furnace. You've got to. By the way, what's a metabolic furnace? I've never seen one. I've seen a cadaver, looked inside, no furnace. Yeah, right. But that's what we're taught. And and you got to eat oatmeal in the morning. Must. If you don't eat oatmeal, you can't grow. Yeah. And also heart health. Oh, Something yeah. Something about that. Absolutely. Heart health. Mm -hmm. So what I found was really interesting to me, and it was kind of backwards from everything that I had learned or been taught about nutrition. So I started eating in this way myself because I was working as a personal trainer at the time. So I'm working from like 6 a.m. till 8 p.m. sometimes, working really late. And then I've got classes the last three hours of the day. And you know, you got to be lit up and like really exuberant for your classes. So... I was just dying. I was always tired. So I started switching up my, my nutrition to, to fit this. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel great. My energy's better. My mood is better. I feel smarter during the day. Like I've got more focus and mental acuity. I'm not going to eat all the time. That's, that's a win. And then I started getting better results. I started looking the way I wanted to look, you know? And I think at this point I started feeling like 
I know a lot of us in the gym use that as a way of like running away from insecurities and yeah. feeling like and not having confidence in the way we look. And I think at, at this point was when I started transitioning to not necessarily running away from insecurities and fear, but like running towards something that was better and more uplifting and like this positive idea. Yeah, running towards energy and clarity and all of the benefits that come from it. Rather, Dude, I know exactly what you mean because uh, we see it all the time. Like if somebody that you know from high school or whatever, maybe you follow them on Facebook and then all of a sudden they get really super fit and then you look back through their feed – almost a guarantee that something tragic happened in their life. Like they had a divorce, they had something happen and they needed to get away from it. So they got into the gym and they started to create that new identity rather than getting the benefits they were just chasing or trying to run away from this stuff. So I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So I think, I think that's an important step that everyone needs to go through if they want those really long-term results is changing their identity to being looking toward the positive stuff and trying to get better and stronger and faster and like all the things that can possibly happen in the gym mm. rather than trying to get smaller and drop weight and lose fat and decrease pant size, which are all thinking about making you smaller and fit into a box, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that was a big, big um, identity shift for me. So started eating this way, gave this, this method to my clients. They started getting really good results and they were like, man, it's easy to do. This doesn't even feel like a diet to me. This is just how I eat now. So then fast forward a couple years and I'm talking to Jason our mutual friend, he's mm -hmm. starting a roofing business here in Arizona. And he's like, bro, I'm always tired. I work 12 hours a day. I'm in my truck all the time. I don't have any energy. I get home and I'm dying. Yep. I drink three or four energy drinks a day. What do you got for me? And I was like, well, what about a workout? And he's like, no time to work out. I was like, what about prepping your meals? He's like, I'm going to eat out five times per week. And I was like, all right, let me come up with something. So I went back to this style of eating because I've kind of kept it around for a while. And uh, like fast forward two months or so, I was like, dude, how's, how's everything going? And he goes... Oh, it's great. I'm down to like two energy drinks a day. My kids notice a difference. My wife notices a difference when I get home. He's like, I feel really good. I'm in the car. I'm still eating fast food. And I was like, okay, cool. We like want to do something about like drop some weight now or whatever. And he's like, well, that's the thing is I've lost 22 pounds in the last two months. I was like, shit. All right. Well, we might have something here. Yeah. So that was in 2018. And so I started kind of building out my programs and processes around this, this program, which I call like the system is called low carb backloading. Mm-hmm. And so I call it the million dollar body method. And in 2021, I wrote a book about it because I feel like it's something that is really powerful and can help a lot of people. And I want it to be available regardless of if someone, A, can work with me or not, or B, if I'm, a, if I'm around in the fitness industry in 10 years, you know? Mm -hmm. I want it to be something some, that people can pick up in the, in the future and use it to get results. So this is actually my second book that I wrote. My first one was called Passport Fitness. And it was, it was cute, super cute. It, yeah. it was... <laughs> It was all about like these tips and stuff and just like tips and anecdotes basically. Yeah. Not transformative at all. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted this book to be something that people could take and take action on immediately. So at the end of it, you get a 28 day program dialed in for you so you can try this out because I think that experimentation yeah. is the key to having fun and getting great results. Well, one of the things I really liked about the book and we were talking about it a little earlier is how you break up like the breakfast, the lunch, uh, you know, your different snacks, your know, dinner and you called them, uh, it was, what, what did you call like the breakfast? It was like the million dollar breakfast or something like that. I think I call it like the entrepreneur breakfast. The entrepreneur, there you the, go. The startup That's lunch and the CEO dinner. And for me, like I've had almost the same breakfast for like four years now. Mm -hmm. And it's just a protein shake. Like I didn't put anything else in it. It's a couple scoops of whey protein and some almond milk with no extra sugar in there. And that's it. Yes, very boring, by the way. But I always would find myself like I needed to eat something right after I had that shake. And then I just grinned and bared it, and I, I would wait and maybe have a snack a couple hours later. Um, but I'm like, man, that, that kind of sucks. So I'm reading your book, and you were talking about adding peanut butter to it. And I'm like, oh, okay, let, let me try that. So I had a little scoop of peanut butter. And, man, I didn't really have that. I want to gnaw my arm off in, in five minutes uh, like I, n I normally had. So now I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool just by adding that extra fat. And I, I've been more like keto-ish diet for quite some time. So it's not like I didn't have fat. I just didn't do it in the morning. Mm. So that was like something that clicked in my brain. And then the lunches that you uh, give the different ideas around. So talk to, talk to me about that, and like uh, what your thought process is and what it does for your body by eating the style that you put in the book. So there's a couple different reasons that I think it works. I don't even think I was aware of it when I was coming up with this back in 2014. 
Um, number one, it is, it's, it's almost like a blood sugar diet. Mm -hmm. So when people have what's called insulin resistance, which is basically means you can't process carbs effectively. You get carbs, your insulin spikes, your, and you don't have too many, too much insulin. Then, so your, your blood sugar drops down, but you still have insulin left in Yeah, and it should be even, right? But you still, you still have that insulin left in there. Now you're getting hunger signals that are like, Hey, let's, let's get some food. So what do we do? We grab the half that donut, right? Yep. All of a sudden, blood sugar's back up, our insulin level's back up, and you're all day long just chasing each other around, mm -hmm. and you're outside of balance. And that's when we're getting hunger pangs at like 10.30, 2.30. That's when you're falling, you're wanting to fall asleep under your desk after lunch at 4 o'clock. You're, you're getting home tired. All of those things are indicative of dysfunction in your blood sugar and insulin levels. So first thing is what we want to do is, is we want to give you a nice even level of blood sugar throughout the day because that's so important for your energy and focus. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I want to eliminate snacking. I don't want people to be eating all the time. The six meals per day nonsense. Do you know where this came from, by the way? Uh, the six meals per day? Mm -hmm. No, it's been, I mean, ever since I was that tall. Right, that's, it's law. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. of the metabolic furnace. Yeah. You know, it came <laughs> from me Metrics, MetRx. Oh, yeah, okay. That makes sense. So in like 91, 92, they mm -hmm. came out with a protein. It was like the, the first like chalky whey protein. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, how do we sell more of this stuff? Because it tastes gross. And they're like, you know what? We need to have three meals per day and you need to have three shakes per day. Yeah. <laughs> Six meals per day. And they're like, why? They're like, mm, me me metabolism. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So it, that's like, it's kind of like the De Beers three months, uh, three months of salary for an engagement ring. Right. It's just this marketing tactic that became like culturally law, you know? Absolutely. Well, it's, it's funny because uh, they almost were carving themselves their own market. <laughs> they're like, hey, we're just going to reprogram everybody on how they're going to eat so we can get our shakes in there. And it stayed that way. Like EAS was the same way. It's like, oh, yeah, you need two shakes a day plus, you know, your other meals. And, and EAS did a much better job like as far as their product. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember them from back in the day. Yeah, yeah. But they, their strawberry was actually pretty good. Uh, but gosh dang metrics, the one thing they did good is their bars. Yes. They created their bars, but I mean, there's like 50 grams of sugar in the freaking thing. Of yeah, course so it's, it's going to taste good. Yeah, but you, but you got 24 grams of protein Of too, course, so yeah, yeah. That's a, you, I can pretty much trick myself into eating anything bad as long as it has a protein content. Yeah, I yeah. like brownies, well, it had a quarter cup of milk, so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, and eggs. <laughs> Don't yeah. forget about eggs and brownies. That's right. Um, so yeah, so like you took it back to, hey, this is really the way we should be eating. So you start out and you, you're evening your blood sugar. And what are you recommending? I mean, I already kind of ruined the uh, entrepreneur you breakfast. The but yeah, this was my big reveal. Yeah. It's a protein shake. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. But yeah, just like uh, as long as it has proteins and fats in it. So like protein powder and peanut butter, almond butter. Great. You know, eggs and avocado or bacon. Great. And I like one. I like chicken thighs and almonds. That's like my favorite breakfast to eat before I do thing, something like really active, go skiing or whatever. Yeah. I have great energy all day. I feel fantastic. Um, Charles Poliquin, by the way, was a big fan of the meat and nut breakfast. Okay. So that's like, what, like, that's a great way to start off your day. And I think that a lot of times people screw this up by only doing the protein shake or they get that pre-made like premier protein shake with 30 grams of protein. And yes. they're like, I'm starving an hour later. I'm like, well, that's not food. Right. You gotta, you gotta dump that, use that as your liquid and then add other stuff to it. So as long as you have like the, the right breakfast. And by the way, I love what you said about having the last, same breakfast for the last 10 years. Because I think one of the key things about this is make this shit boring. Everyone wants something fancy and new, new. Just make it boring. Yeah. You eat it for 10 years straight, that's, a, that's good news. Because now you don't have to think about what you're having when you wake up. Yep. So you avoid that big decision in the morning. You're not like, oh, oatmeal? Is it Captain Crunch? Should I have a bagel? Like, what about whole grain toast? Yeah. yeah. What else am I going to eat for carbs? Yeah, skip yeah. it. Just Donuts. have the same thing yeah. all the time. I, I love it because of the simplicity of it. Like I literally, if I were to dial it down, I probably eat the same 10 things all the time. I mean, there, there's not a whole lot of deviation from that. And it is for the simplicity factor of it. Um, but I'm a routine guy. And, and when you get into routine, what's nice is, number one, you don't have to think about it, but you're getting a predictable result every single time. And, you know, now that predictable result also can be getting super fat if you're not eating the right things. If you're eating donuts every day. Yeah, I'll predict that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so, yeah, what, uh, what does the, the lunch and the, the dinner typically look like? And what do you recommend? So lunch is going to be light. <clears throat> You know, I think that if you want to get more done, eat light. And I call this the entrepreneur's diet mm -hmm. because when I'm talking to people, most of the people that I'm talking to or working with are business owners, C-level executives, or entrepreneurs in some form or fashion. Yeah. So they live and die by their energy and their focus. And these are the people who will 100% skip the gym in order to sign a contract or, or bring on a new client. Right. 
hundred percent of the time without deep, without uh, without like deviation at all. And so I want to help them understand that by eating in a specific way, it's not about, oh, I'm losing fat, I'm reducing my carbs. It's about making more money. Right. It's about doing the things that you want to do. Like, I think uh, there's a quote that kind of reminds me what you were talking about earlier with your shake is by a guy named Gustave Flaubert. He says, be boring and orderly in your life so that you may be violent and original in your work. Ooh. And I love that because I think that, like, no one is super passionate about the hip angle in a Bulgarian split squat or how many grams of carbs are in celery. No one gives a shit. Yeah. But what they care about is their family. They care about making money. They care about being successful. They care about their hobbies. They, like, so let's give them the, the ability to do those things at a really high level and make this shit really easy. Yeah, totally. Well, Eric, uh, who just walked in, he always talks about taking care of the car. Well, you are the car. Well, what does the car take? It takes oil. It takes gas. It takes a lot of different things. But if you look at your body like that and fueling your body like that, mm -hmm. it's far more effective than treating food as something that is like a treat. And I want to do this and, and not, hey, it's just fuel. It's fuel. So I can have the engine running, the car going the way I want it to, so I can be better in my hobbies, have better relationships, all that, that fun stuff. So. Yeah, so you got to take care of the car, right? You got to look at food differently. Look at it as fuel and not as this pleasure thing because when you do that, now you're going to eat things that aren't good for you and you're not going to get the results, right? Yeah, like you treat yourself like, you, like you've conditioned yourself to, I did good, I need a treat, the treat is a blueberry muffin. That's not conducive to a healthy lifestyle. On the flip side of that, I do think that there is room for room for celebration and culture and community and love in food, right? Like you talk green to beer, like we were just talking about. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, one today. Good, St. Patty's Day. You talk to anybody's abuela, mm -hmm. like you're not going, you're not getting away without seconds. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. So I think there's a like there's balance there, and that's what I like about this style is that breakfast is the same all the time. Lunch is really minimal, and we're trying to we're minimizing our carbohydrates at lunch. So it's gonna be vegetables, it's gonna be protein, as much as you want of both. But enjoy, but enjoy that keep your carbohydrates again really, really low. And then for dinner, the cool part is that it's a lot more flexible because these people that I'm, I'm working with, talking to, they're having di client dinners, you know, mm -hmm. you're going out to eat, you got celebrations, you got like holidays. And if you've been very rigid throughout the day in terms of your, not only your nutrition, but your energy management mm -hmm. personally, you have more flexibility at nighttime. Yeah. So at nighttime, I really recommend just having a carb, a protein and a vegetable. Pretty simple, like that's a basics basis of a lot of different meals. You know, so you can do that at Thanksgiving, you can do that at grandma's house, you can do that at a restaurant, you right. can do that with clients, whatever. And then it's like, well, okay, Josh, you wanna have grilled shrimp and Crapton Crunch and Brussels sprouts? I'm like, okay, well that's really weird, bro. But, <laughs> but okay, I can do it though? But it works. Yeah. You know, it fits the framework. Yeah. And so giving people the ability to have that. So like you want a brownie, great. You take out the white rice, you have your brownie, that's your carbohydrate, like congratulations. You're doing it. You got to have the, the thing you wanted. And then I love this because you're also practicing delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. So at, at lunchtime, you're like, God, I want that donut. I want to eat that donut. You're like, all right, I'll have it as my carb for dinner. Yeah. Like, and now it's, and now it's not, it's not never have it again. And you get fixated on it. It's like, oh, I, I know I'll get it then. So mm -hmm. you, you, A, either get to enjoy it two times because you enjoy the anticipation and you get to enjoy the experience. Mm -hmm. Or by the time you get to dinner, you're like, I actually didn't want it, really want it. You know, I love that because uh, I heard this a long time ago. It's more of a live it. It's not a diet. It's something you can do forever. Like I eat almost the same way all the time. I added, you know, a couple things from what you had put in there. But ever since I adjusted that, now that's just part of how I live and how I eat. But I'm, I'm totally, I like that because it's easy to live by and you're not on some fad diet that you get results and then you get tired of it and all that kind of stuff. So I love the approach because it's something that anybody can do and stay on forever. And you can also apply it to all different types of diets, right? Mm -hmm. So it's more of a framework than a diet in itself. So you can do it with paleo, you can kind of do it with keto, you can do it with Mediterranean, you can do it with low carb, you can do it with Atkins, you can do it with tracking macros. You can do it however you want to do it, mm -hmm. and you can slide in whatever foods that you like, but it's just basically proteins and fats in the morning, proteins and vegetables for lunch, proteins, carbs, and veggies for dinner, go. Beautiful. So I know we've been talking a lot about nutrition and diet and fitness, which is obviously low carb hustle again, but you're an entrepreneur and you, and you, you uh, are part of the, the Menace crew. You got your own energy drink coming out. Like when did the entrepreneurial side of you come out? Um, when I was nine or 10, I was really into yo-yos and I went to like one of the brain works or something at the, at the mall. Yeah. And I bought what they called a skein of strings. This is my first journey into like entrepreneurship and there's a thousand yo-yo strings. And I went door to door in my neighborhood selling yo-yo strings for a quarter each. And I made like four bucks, so ballin'. 
<laughs> I had a ton of strings left over. <laughs> but so, so what are we thinking you were selling strings for if without the yo-yo? Well, people need the need, need the strings. You know, they, I don't. I guess I could have sold yo-yos door to door. That's a good idea. I should go back in time. <laughs> That's my big. That's my big takeaway from today. Because you gotta have like the yo-yo uh, part. But I just assumed that everyone had yo-yos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know if you remember like 1997, but like I think everyone did have a yo-yo. Yeah, I think you're, you're, you're right actually there. The bumblebee. Okay. Classics. Right. Yeah, I'll give you that. You're right. Everybody had those, and, and they were cool too. They would say you could literally sleep one for a minute. I knew people that do all kinds of stuff. I only thing I could ever do was I could sleep it not that long, but then I could do the. The uh, Rock the Cradle. Remember Rock the Cradle? Uh, of course I remember Rock the Cradle. Yeah. yeah. And then you have people that are like freaking pros and they're doing all this weird, cool stuff. And I'm like, I can't do that. But. I wonder if I have a yo-yo in my backpack right now. I might. I'm not sure. Can you, did you, were you able to do all that stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Girl, so you were a yo-yo enthusiast. Ah, yeah. got it. Was, you're, you were spreading your passion then. <laughs> got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was like, that was my start. And I was like, I, I think that kind of triggers something for me. It's like, oh, you can just make money. If you get people to give you money, yeah, you know, so, a service. And then, uh, so when I graduated from college in 2008, I don't remember the the job market then was not good. No, you know? like we everyone was like, we lost all of our stuff. We are closing down. So I got, a, I was like, well, I guess I'll go get a job at a gym. And they're like, great, we're not going to pay you. And I was like, perfect. That sounds exactly like what I need. <laughs> So like, it was like, hey, if you get the clients, you can get paid. Congratulations. You know, like make as much as you want to. And so I've never really had a job that, um, that, that paid me a salary. Okay. I had one for three months that, that I hated every moment of. And then I quit that and I opened my own fitness studio in Scottsdale. So, uh, so I've just kind of always been on that entrepreneurial journey, but I, but my, one of my goals has always been, how do I trade? How do I stop trading time for money and how have to go to the, like this, the exact location all the time. So right. how do I get location freedom? How do I build time freedom? And I haven't figured out the second part yet, but I'm at the point where all of my stuff that I'm doing is online. So when my wife and I want to go to Puerto Rico for the summer and bring our kids with us and we can both work because we both have jobs online. Great. We can. So that's been really nice to like kind of take like, take this goal of like what I want our family and our life to look like and, you know, work that into the business because I feel like I see so many people who are going through the journey of entrepreneurship, but they've never really thought about like what they want out of it. Like it's always just like, let's build something big. Let's, mm -hmm. let's get a lot of money. But then they find themselves, you know, working 16 hours to avoid working eight hours, you know? Totally. Well, it's uh, interesting. So Michael, who you just met, who was on uh, the previous episode, uh, Michael was talking about, writing down what you want. So it's funny, two back-to-back -back people because it's it's common. A lot of people are just working and they don't really have a, a goal of like what they want. And I was telling him what what's interesting to me and what at least has hit my mind. I think a lot of people don't write down what they want because they think they have to write down just material things. But if you write down what you want as far as like freedom with your, your family, being able to travel, being able to, to be that dad that's at the baseball games uh, or the, the recitals, you know, those types of things, like that should be what you're writing down what you want. Nothing wrong with the material things too, but people need clarity on that. When they realize what they want their life to look like, then you say, cool, now I have a goal. And then you can start working towards it. Yeah, and then like if you don't have that clarity, like even if even if you're working hard, you're you're if you don't if you're not map questing something, and you're just driving really fast. <laughs> right. You don't yeah. know where you're gonna end up. Yeah. And I think also like yeah, people think that they want material things, but I don't think people realize what they actually want. I think it's very rare to be like, here's what I want my life to look like. People barely know what they want to do this weekend, much less like what I want my life to look like in five and ten years. And like I don't say that sitting over here being like I have everything mapped out and it's all written down in an Excel spreadsheet, like. I'm still working on this on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's still something that my wife and I have conversations about. I love like taking road trips with her because I feel like kids will kind of be in the back asleep, whatever. I got a two-year-old and an almost five-year-old, and we'll just talk about life and the future. And I think that's like it's such a fun, intimate moment for me with her, of like having these these times to chat about what we want things to look like. And yeah. so it's a consistent like dialing in, throw, oh, throwing things on the calendar, like. She last year was like, I want to go to Canada this summer. I want to go to like, I want to go to the mountains. I want to be near the lake. And so I was like, oh, cool. Put that on the list. And so been working on that, saving up. And we booked uh, like we're five weeks in Alberta now. Beautiful. You know, I'm, I'm the same way on road trips with my wife. Like it's same exact thing. Like we, so we just took a 18 day road trip from here. Uh, 
I think there was 13 different states, but from here all the way out to South Carolina and uh, and back with our kids. But so much time that we were able to just kind of talk about, you know, what our goals are. And this is like right at the end of 2022. So about what do we want to accomplish in 2023? And we had some changes. My company was acquired or one of my companies was acquired. We have our other one that she's running. And, you know, what do we want to do for this next summer? We're going to Nashville. We're taking the kids there. And but same kind of thing. Like I love that time with her because it make it makes a, a difference because now we're we're sharing ideas and we're mapping on our life together. Uh-huh. Whereas if you don't have that time, sometimes I recommend to anybody who's married, just hop in the car and drive to like well, if you're in Arizona, drive to Flagstaff or something. Two to three hours with your spouse like that can really help your marriage and totally. making sure you're seeing you have the right same vision together. Dude, it's hard to get that otherwise. Mm-hmm. You know, like even when you're together, you're do like you're making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the kids. By the way, I thought parenting was gonna be like, you know, teaching kids how to do sports and like disciplining them and like, you know, giving them allowances. I didn't realize how much of parenting was washing the same dish fifty seven times a day. <laughs> It's so, it's so much. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> parenting is uh, amazing and I, and I love my kids, but there are a lot of mundane things that you just don't realize that your parents did for you that now you're doing. And like my wife hates two things. Mm. She hates dishes. Okay. And, like with a passion, she okay. hates doing it and she hates laundry. It, and I, I'm thankful if you're watching this, honey, that you do these things because I hate them too. Uh, and I know it's a trade off and I, I try to help here and there. But yeah, it's just this mundane thing over and over. Like my daughter just lost her first tooth two days ago, uh, and she's the the youngest of them all. So things like that are fun. Yeah, my wife also hates dishes and laundry, and I so I do the dishes, but I I I have yet to take over the laundry because she's very specific how she folds stuff, and I can't live up to the hype on the on the folding. Like, yeah, like I feel like I did this a little on purpose, but like when we were getting married, we were setting out. Like, like uh, invites to people. Yeah. And I was in charge of the return address label. Okay. And so you know, all I had to do is stick it on. I had about six, her and her mom were like, why don't you go outside? Yeah. You don't get to do that anymore. And I think I brought that same energy to folding clothes. Right. And I'm like, I'll just slap it together and stuff in the drawer. She's like, that's not acceptable to me. I, uh, so I, I decided to, I'll clean the floors instead. <laughs> hey, that's the thing. You trade off. Do the one thing that you, you kind of like that you don't hate, and then she can do the thing that she kind of likes or at least doesn't hate as much, and you do the, the trade offs. I learned to fold clothes when I was young because I was, I was a latchkey kid, and that was the one thing my stepmom made me do all the laundry. All uh, of it. All the laundry. Uh, yeah, so I folded clothes for uh, until my brother was born. It was just her, my dad, and myself. Um, and then my brother was born, and you know, he was in diaper forever. But, it, but yeah, I had to do all the laundry, and I learned that. And that's where I started to loathe it. I'm like, this is the worst chore ever. <laughs> but I learned to fold shirts really, really well. I actually, you know Tim Ferriss? Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of his books, I think it was a four-hour chef in there. Because he, although it's a chef book, it's teaching how to learn. And he had this trick on folding shirts. Um, so as a kid, I folded it a certain way. But now I can fold a shirt in like a second and a half, and it looks perfect. That's how they actually do it in stores. You have to look it up on YouTube. Maybe we'll post a link to it. So, all right, it's totally random, but yeah. Well, that's that's gonna put me on the hook for doing laundry. So maybe I'm gonna avoid it. I oh, will see. That's right. Well, maybe maybe your wife won't listen to this. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was. I feel like when I, when I was got when I got married, I've been married for almost 12 years now. Uh, I reached out to a bunch of people who have who have been and been married for 20, 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. My parents got divorced when I was 11, so they they were together. So I was always like, what's like the secret? Why like how are you guys still together and some people aren't and stuff. So I reached out to a, a bunch of people, and one guy gave me some advice. He said, pick a traditionally female household chore and just do that for the rest of your life. And he's like, I mop the floors. And so I was like, I'll do the dishes. So that's, I feel like that was really good advice from a kind of a random person. That is really good advice. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll take that up. I'll figure something out that, I, I, that my wife hates, and maybe I'll take that over. Yeah. I like Love it. that for you. Yeah. So, what's what's on the agenda for you? What's uh, the future look like? What are your goals? You know, what what where can people find you? Buy the new energy drink, um, you know, your book, all that good stuff. So, if you want to check out the book, I, again, I just want to get this into as many people's hands as possible. So, you can go to getnatesbook.com, and I'll send you the ebook or the Kindle version, whatever cool. you want. If you want the hard copy or you want the Audible, it's all on Amazon, so you can get it there. Million Dollar Body Method is what it's called. And then you can check me out, check out the podcast it's called low carb hustle. I'm also really active on Instagram at low carb hustle. I post a lot of like fitness stuff and nutrition stuff, but also a lot of dumb shit. And cause that's my favorite. 
Yeah, no, actually, you're very entertaining on social media, like very entertaining. I, I like your reels and the way you do things. Um, and then your podcast, you were telling me uh, that we have a mutual uh, friend, Peter Meyerhoff's coming up. It was just on your po uh, podcast. And, yep. you know, based on what you told me, that, that, that clip, you got to listen to that. So go check out uh, Nate's podcast because that, that's going to be good. Um, and what, uh, with the, the energy drink, where can people get these if they, they want to try it out? So the energy drink, I don't have a place where people can go order it yet. We're just kind of doing it right now, this soft launch for clients and like members of the Menace, the Menace program. Oh yeah. So we're going to get people to like, you know, if they want it, we're going to send it, we're going to set aside a couple of cases for them every month. Okay. And then we'll gradually work on building up our, building that up a little bit more and see if we can get it in stores and stuff. But right now we're just kind of taking it real slow and just using that. A lot for like marketing and branding, to be honest with you, because yeah. it looks so dope. We got the black can and the white can, yep. the sugar-free and the regular, and yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, talk a little bit about the Menace uh, crew, because you guys do coaching. Um, you know, basically they're business entrepreneurs uh, that are helping business entrepreneurs get better, and grow, and all that stuff. Yeah, so it's a it's a cool group that I've been really blessed to be a part of. So we I started off hanging out with these dudes in like 2018. That's when I was talking with yeah. Jason. Mm -hmm. And Jason was just starting his roofing business, had just quit like a bad situation. Uh, Terrence was doing turnkey real estate out in Indianapolis. Nick was running a real estate, uh, like a thriving real estate company here in, in the Valley. And so we were always talking about, we, we called it the GSD, the Get Shit Done Mastermind. Mm -hmm. And so we were just talking about ideas and business ideas and like how do we amplify all of our stuff. And so we just kind of stayed in touch and done retreats. And eventually Jason, Nick and Terrence all decided to partner and they kind of left the other things that they were doing and came together to become menace. Mm -hmm. And so the goal of that was to, to teach, teach people how Jason built a $7 million roofing business and how Terrence is doing all of his investing in real estate, but also what he learned about YouTube ads and how to actually grow a, grow a brand. And then Nick's a fantastic coach. He's really great at helping people. He helps people write books and build their like funnels and marketing materials and create great videos and stuff like that. So they have these really complementary skill sets. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to be involved with that. So I was like, how can, how can we work together? And they're like, well, let's build a fitness side of this. So while I do for my, for my business, Low Carb Hustle and Million Dollar Body, I do a lot of coaching and like consult, consultation for people. Mm -hmm. what, we do, what we're doing together is, is launching a supplement brand, a lifestyle and apparel brand. Cool. So that's been really fun to have those guys like working with working together with them. It's, it's great to work with your buddies too. Yeah. Well, and that's that's it, man. If you can work with people that you enjoy on a daily basis, not to say that sometimes you don't have to get it on because you know that's that's business and whatnot, but it, it makes whatever you're doing a lot more fun uh, and it, more rewarding too. Because I, I do believe there's a lot of people that have the, those nine to five jobs mm -hmm. that provides a great paycheck. However, they don't necessarily like the environment or some of the people that they're with all the time. To be able to create that intentionally yourself with people that you enjoy is amazing. I like that word "create" because I think a lot of people are pigeonholed in this idea that they have to get what they're give what they're take or take what they're given. Yeah. Like, you, hey, here's your nine to five. Oh, by the way, we need you to stay an hour later tonight. And I reject that. I don't think that that is like is the case. I don't think that there are rules. I think that like the rules and social norms are a construct that are that's given to us by others. And they're not, it's not reality. So I think that creating a lifestyle that you want begins with knowing what do you want. Mm -hmm. start, start there. Figure out what you want. And because you can make money a billion different ways. Absolutely. You know, there's someone making tons of money selling rubber dicks on the internet. Yeah. Someone way richer than both of us. <laughs> right? Yeah, think you're about, you're probably correct. I'm 100% correct. <laughs> I don't even know who they are. So, like, if you think about that, like... Like, what is stopping you from going out and creating a life that you love, building a product that you want to build, cr like coaching some people and helping them come up, doing some advertising, creating a product? Like, there are so many avenues that you could that you could take to become successful, and all it takes is just opening your mind up and allowing yourself to understand that there are no rules. Right. You know, I, I love that you said that. So this is maybe like Tuesday night, I think it was, and I was just it was after work. I was hanging out. I think I was having a cigar. And I, st I had this weird thing that came to me. It says, life is really the movie you get to create because you get to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work with this person. And then you let that scene play out of how that's going to work. I want to marry this person. And then you let that scene play out. Now we have kids. I want to teach my kids these things because I'm going to let that scene play out in their lives. And, and then they have their own story. But you get to create that story. And you're almost like the the director behind the scenes that just gets to say, cool, I'm going to do this. 
and then we're going to let that play out. And if people look at their lives like that, I think it's a really cool way uh, to, to understand that you're creating everything around you, good, bad, or indifferent. And if you're intentional with it, you can create whatever you want. I totally agree, and I love, I love that because it's just a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. When so many people don't see themselves as the director of their own life, they see themselves as like someone who is like given a script and you're like forced to read your lines. Yeah. Like I think that if you can envision envision yourself as being like, well, I didn't like this, so I moved on and I changed it. You know, I created something new. I built it. I created a new opportunity. And you can take that radical responsibility for your actions and develop that internal locus of control versus like victim mentality, external locus of control. Things happen to me. No, I happen to things. Like, mm -hmm. like I love the Bruce Lee quote. He's like, when you're in a room with your enemies, don't think, oh, I'm trapped in here with them. Think they're trapped in here with me. Right. And I think that like, I think like you can apply that to life and be like, no, I'm not at like at the mercy and the whims of all these people and the emotions that I feel from someone cutting me off in traffic or leaving me a mean YouTube review. By the way, someone on YouTube said that I have the worst hair in the history of hair. <clears throat> so you should know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, people online, man, they, they get real brave and, and on the keyboard sometimes. Yeah. I, just, I just chuckle. I've had some things said about me and I'm just like, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but if you don't take, if you don't let the external circumstances disturb your internal peace right. or affect how you go about your life, Man, like, there's so much power in that. There's mm -hmm. so much power in being able to adapt and create something new and be like, no, I'm in charge of that. I'm, I'm responsible for my own emotions. I'm responsible for how I respond to that. I'm responsible for the fact that I don't have what I want right now. Right. I'm responsible for the fact that my body is not in the shape it, it, it should be in. It's not age. It's not my metabolism. Yep. It's me. It's 100% me. I'm not in the financial situation that I want to be in. That's my problem. Mm -hmm. And when you can start owning things like that, that is such a powerful feeling yes because no longer do you feel like well, I have to wait for so-and-so to give me permission or my wife to say I can go hire a coach or my business partners to give me the green light on this thing it's like no I own it I go for it and like and I'm going to create the future that I want right. I think that's that's like one of the best things about entrepreneurship but also just like the coolest thing about life in general absolutely well uh, we're gonna end there because this was awesome mate um, thanks for coming on today I really appreciate it and you, you've got a lot of energy, a lot of really good energy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I'm sure you hear that, or at least you know people kind of express that to you a lot. Uh, but guys, I know you got a ton out of this episode, and we're going to cut up a ton of clips I can already think of on this one. Uh, please share this out. I want you to check out Low Carb Hustle on Instagram. Uh, shoot, go get his book. It helped me. It'll help you. Uh, and then you know, stay plugged in what they got going on with MFit, which is part of the Menace brand. And uh, we appreciate you guys coming on. See you soon.